Single men, what made you definitely not want a second date with the woman you went out with? Story 1. She forgot to take off her wedding ring at the second date. Story 2. So, I take this girl out to a bar slash restaurant, meeting her for the first time after talking on an online dating site. After she orders her food, things took an unexpected turn. She tells me that for the past seven years, she has been a professional do- so, I'm an open-minded guy, I'm cool with this. She probably has some funny stories, right? Well, she starts telling me these stories, and for the first half an hour or so, they were pretty entertaining. Eventually, though, I want to talk about other things. However, anytime I try to change the subject, she immediately brings it back to dudes she pooped on. It got weird. I could barely get a word in. She basically didn't take a breath for three hours. Again, I'm a really open-minded guy, but there's only so many consecutive stories of ball gags and dildo a person can take before even the most open-minded amongst us start to feel uncomfortable. At one point, I excuse myself to go to the bathroom. As I stand up and turn around, she seizes this chance to smack my b and says, You're looks like a baby pumpkin, I could bounce a quarter off it and get back two dimes and a nickel. Keep in mind, this lady is a professional. It was crisp and painful. To put this in perspective, I was wearing thick jeans. She hit me in my back pocket, and when I checked myself for damage in the bathroom, there was a clear fat red handprint on my cheek. So, I'm about done with this. We finish the meal and I drive her home, while she still blabs tales of toys I've never heard of going in places I wish I hadn't heard. So, I pull in her driveway. The second the car goes into park, she immediately grabs my balls, like specifically targeted them. And it wasn't hot, it was a hostage situation where she had all the power. Then she straight licks the side of my face, chin to hairline, her tongue as big as Shetland Pony. I don't want it. Then she looks me in the eyes and says menacingly, I'm gonna strap you into my dungeon. The hell you are. I choose life, I think to myself. How do I get out of this? She literally has me by the b here. So here's what I come up with. I tell her that hell yeah, let's do it. I have a special toy I keep in my trunk. Is that okay? She says, sure, bring any toys you want. So I tell her to meet me at her doorstep while I bust it out because I want it to be a surprise. As she steps out of the car, she gives me a look that she thinks is hot, but is actually terrifying. The second her feet touch the ground, I slam the car in reverse and fly out of her driveway as fast as my car can go. You know how most people pull out of a driveway, switch to drive, then drive off ahead? I didn't do that. I didn't want that one second of switching gears to give her the chance to catch me. I pulled out the driveway and just kept going down the street in reverse for like five blocks. The passenger door was flapping around, still open because I took off before she shut it. When I'm satisfied she won't catch me, I close the door, put it in drive, and go home. Gotta get back on that horse, right? Wrong. I got home, iced my and deleted my online dating profile. Not today, Satan. Story 3. She showed up in a dirty white dress, and her hair looked like it had not been brushed in months. During dinner, she told me that she still lived at home, never wanted to get a job, and that she stole her dad's car while he was asleep to meet me at the restaurant. Then, when she found out that I was divorced, she said, You didn't work hard enough to save your marriage. I put down the chopsticks, went and paid, said, Nice meeting you, and left. Story 4. I met a girl from my university for dinner one time, and she started the date off by saying she only ate with her hands and didn't use utensils because she's a super taster and can taste the metals they're made of. This wouldn't have been a problem if we were eating finger foods, of course, but but it was a problem as I watched her eat a salmon fillet and wild rice like f***ing Gollum. Whoa, talk about getting a taste of what a relationship with her would be like. I guess on the bright side, if you ever run out of forks, she'll still be a handy dinner date. Story 5. I went on a Tinder date and she forgot to mention that she had a boyfriend. I became suspicious when I saw the background of her phone. It was a picture of her kissing with a man. When I asked her about that picture, she told me it was her boyfriend. The reason she was doing this was because her boyfriend was boring. She couldn't answer when I asked her why she didn't break up with him in the first place. Told her that what she was doing was not cool, and that she needs to be honest to her boyfriend. Ended the date afterwards. Geez, you really did have a really crazy first date. I guess I'll be asking the girl on my next date, are you single single or mad at your boyfriend single? Story 6. I was 32 and she was 25. She showed up to dinner high as a kite. Dropped the word 
went several times loud enough for the people around us to hear. She then got loaded during dinner, ordered an expensive plate, and barely touched it. She also told me I'm stupid for still buying books and childish for listening to music. She also insisted I had to take her out two to three times a week minimum. It was also implied she'd be moving in with me in the near future. She was unemployed and living at home, which honestly didn't bother me. The whole jumping into the deep end did. 20 minutes into the date, I texted my friend. Holy sh**. Turns out she's awful. Story 7. We meet up for a coffee and mid-afternoon sweet treat. All was going fairly well, not great chemistry, but she seemed fairly interesting. Then she asked me what I thought was a great first date. Maybe second? In hindsight, question with the following. If you knew you were going to go to jail at some point in your life, what do you think it would be for? I thought for a while and said something like insider trading. What about you? I followed up. Without missing a beat, she said murder, then named the person and the reason for their action. After that, she suggested if I ever saw their name on the news for being killed. I should tell the police it was her. I thought she was joking, but I don't think so. Finished my coffee, said thanks, and left. Story 8. I went out with this girl that I knew was pretty religious, but she was still pretty cool and not like the nutty level of religion. She had a couple of beers while we went out, but I realized it wasn't going to be anything sexual or anything. I respect that. Made me like her more, if anything. So, a couple of weeks and after some chatting down the road, she had been asking me to come to some event with a youth group. We're in our mid-twenties. I kind of pressed the issue and tried to make it work out, but we both ended up busy and said, you know, would you just like to go on a more serious date, more than just hanging out at the local bar? She ended up kind of offended about how she was just trying to be nice to me, and I was extremely inappropriate. Pretty much that interest. Sorry, I don't want to go on a date number two to your church. Reply one. Oh boy, was I on that end? The girl was nice and sweet, but once she realized she couldn't convert me, she pretty much had zero interest left. It's also ironic because despite the fact I'm an atheist now, I grew up in a pretty religious family and practically went to Sunday school until I was like 17. At times, I felt like I knew more about her own religion than she did. I would say there are a half a dozen things you must see eye to eye on before you can really start building a relationship. Financial philosophy, religion, having kids, a bit of politics, sex, etc. There are a few layers of compatibility, but there is definitely the first layer of pass or fail to go over before you delve into the more intuitive stuff or get into the stuff that you can disagree on and compromise. Story 9. She didn't say anything. Like, there is being nervous and then there is that. We were taking a film class together in school and agreed to go see a movie together, 50-50, that counted for extra credit. It became clear a few days beforehand that this was turning into a full-on date and I just rolled with it. We were both single, and I thought we could have a fun night out together. I asked if we could get dinner after the movie to talk about it and get to know each other better. She seemed excited by the idea, and I was looking forward for the night. I picked her up, and she was dead silent, dressed to the nines for a casual date, and clearly nervous. I did my best to break the ice and run the conversation, and the best I could get out of her was a nervous chuckle. After the movie, I asked if she still wanted dinner, and she said absolutely, and then proceeded to watch me eat dinner while she stared at me. When I dropped her off at home, she told me that she had a really nice time and hoped we could hang out outside of class again. I told her for sure, and we said goodnight. She flat out never said another word to me in class again. A year or so later, I ran into her at a party and asked her what the whole deal was about. She confessed she was so goddamn anxious that she had no clue what to do or say. Apparently, that was the first date she had ever been on with a guy. It's a shame, too, because in class we got along really well. I was just so put off by the silence that I didn't know how to approach her for the rest of the semester. Story 10. So, I'm not proud of this one, but I'll share. Years ago, when I was still single, I met someone online. We chatted a bit, she seemed cool enough, and we decided to meet up for a burger at a place I knew downtown. Seemed like a kind of low-key thing. I get to the bar a few minutes earlier and order a beer, then finish it. Then, 45 minutes late, she rolls in. Okay, cool. We all have jobs and have dealt with traffic and whatever happens. But no excuse, just a shrug and awareness about it, how it goes sometimes. She sat down, we began chit-chatting. 
She asked about my work. I assumed it was regular, nervous small talk. But no, she was trying to find out how much money I made. When she asked my job title and I told her, she immediately suggested that we leave this casual pub place to hit up a wine bar down the road. It's a little more upscale than I had in mind, but okay. We walk there, get seated, and then come to the menus. We looked at them and she then ordered herself a dinner. Some kind of seafood thing that costs an insane amount of money. And a bottle of wine. Not a glass, mind you. The $250 f***ing bottle of wine. I had already ordered a drink from the bar for myself and got the impression that this was not a wine to share. She kept talking about how her job sucked, how little it paid, and how no one at her work was fun to hang out with. Also, the whole time she was texting friends to meet up that evening, I was invited, of course, to party with them all night, and I assume bankroll their fun. I discreetly went up to the bar, paid for my drink, and just left, straight up noped out of there without so much as a goodbye. From my messages when I checked in online later, I know that I stuck her with an almost $500 bill and that she was going to sue me for it. Heard from the wine bar owner later, it was close to work and a sometimes happy hour spot that she apparently tried to skip out on the bill, but they stopped her and she paid. By the way, my very next date was with the woman I eventually married. It went much, much better. Story 11. I went for a meal with this girl I met through a dating app, and it was going really well. We started talking about movies, and then we decided to go to the cinema to go watch Inception. She said there was a cinema nearby, but I didn't know the area at all, so I used the GPS on my phone, and she held it and directed me. Once we got there, we started walking inside and realized I didn't have my phone in my pocket. I said I must have left it in the car and started to walk back to get it. She was trying to get me to leave it and saying we would miss the film, but the phone was only about a week old. So I was really paranoid about it. We checked the car for about 10 minutes, but we couldn't find it. I asked her to check her jacket and bag out. She said it wasn't there. A couple parked next to us, so I asked them to ring my number because I couldn't find it. It started to ring and it was obviously coming from my date's handbag. She took it out and said she must have missed it. I thanked the couple and locked my car. And as I turned back around, she was walking the other way. I ran to catch up and asked what was going on, but but she was very dismissive and was barely talking. That's when I realized it probably wasn't an accident and just left her to walk home alone. Reply 1. A long time ago I went on a date with this chick. She was insistent on going to a nice place because why not? I settled for the second nicest place near the beach kind of. Mid-dinner, after she was done hers, she asked to use my cell phone to call her mom or friend or something. I thought nothing of it. Anyway, she took my phone and left. After about an hour of not being able to find her anywhere and my phone is off, when I called it, I realized she stole it and got a free meal too. Went home and looked up where my phone was and it was like an hour away from Las Vegas. That girl literally took my phone and started driving immediately to Las Vegas. Story 12. She chewed gum through our initial date, which was at a decent Italian place, including a bottle of good white wine. And she proceeded to tell me how she had married early, had two kids, girls, realized she was a lesbian, left her husband and took most of his money, lived with girlfriend number one, left girlfriend number one, for number two, ended that, and then realized that long term she needed a dick. I noped the f out of there so fast. Story 13. I was supposed to pick her up at noon. I got to the house and knocked. She didn't answer. I texted her. She finally responds and opens the door. She says she's sorry she overslept, goes to the freezer, pulls out a handle of vodka, pulls the tomato juice from the fridge, mixes a huge Bloody Mary and drinks it down, makes a second one and says, let's go. The date wasn't that bad, but I just can't roll like that. She didn't even offer to make you one, complete bull if you ask me. But on the other hand, you were driving, so... She was just being responsible? Maybe? Who knows? Story 14. She spent a good chunk of the date talking about previous bad dates she had been on recently. She went into pretty good detail about the most recent one from a week prior to our date, about how the guy was obnoxious invited her back to his place despite an apparent lack of chemistry, and was having a hard time taking no for an answer, etc. I could go into more detail because I know all of them, but the whole time she was telling me about these bad dates. I so badly wanted to interrupt her and tell her she could add this one to the list considering she spent the whole time being negative about a bunch of other dates that had nothing to do with me. She asked me the next day if we should get another drink sometime, and I said I was pretty busy. 
Story 15. I met this beautiful girl at a club, and uncharacteristically of me, I asked for and got her number. What she had in looks, she lacked in brains, but that wasn't even the issue as far as first dates go. After the date, on the way back to her place to drop her off, she made me drive through a neighborhood of multi-million dollar homes and made it clear that she expected her future husband to provide. To top it all off, her dad was a huge conspiracy theorist and made me sit down to discuss with him dozens of wacky conspiracies while the girl sat silently beside me. King Awful. Story 16 had an interesting one. She hadn't been on a date in a few years. We got as far as a dinner, a movie, and the hotel room, and then she noped out. No worries, as I did the right thing. I was very nice about it. Called her a cab, walked her down, said pleasantries and thanks, and then went back to the hotel room to watch some Five minutes later, I start getting bombarded by text message after text message, telling me all the things I apparently did wrong in order to make her a better date. After replying that I wasn't specially keen on a debrief, she continued unabated for several more messages until I eventually noted that she seemed quite fixated on externalizing and being deliberately hurtful and requested she stops messaging me. She continues on for several more before noting that she would be open for another date and wanting to know when I would be calling her to arrange it. Please leave your story down below in the comments. I would absolutely love to make a video about them in the future. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.